good evening. I come to you today with great love, joy, and happiness in my heart, with faith and hope that you will understand and come together with what I am about to present to you. I am here to speak to you about the world, the world crisis, and the things that we all must face together, the perils and the journey that we have laid out before us. I come to you in hope and reverence and hope that you will listen to what I have to say, that you'll take note of it, and that we could all come together in understanding with one another and to bring a future together that we really want and not the one that the path that is being laid before us. Recently, the march for, against Monsanto, uh, the protests that came out, it, it, it very gladdened my heart to see what was going on with that and to see the people come out in droves and masses to go against something that they believe in their hearts that is damaging the, to the human race. Um, I think her name is Yandana Shiva. She spoke recently and I adored her words. Her words were great and there were things to listen to about the March on Monsanto. The recent protests in Egypt and the recent protests in Europe and in South America and even some here in the United States gives me great hope. But alas, I'm going to have to say that my heart is saddened because our earth and our race is headed down a road in which we are going to fall off a cliff unless we all come together on a certain wavelength and decide that we really want to live peacefully with one another. We have the hopes and dreams within our hearts that we want to fulfill, but we have been taught through years of propaganda, years of brainwashing, to believe that we are hopeless in this world, to believe that the world is basically against us, that we have shortages of food, shelter. That's not true. That is just the way that the system has been laid out for us to believe. I want to plea with the rest of the world. I would like to plea with Africa and with Asia and with Australia and Europe, South America, with every country that happens to be within the world. I would like to make a plea to you today and have an understanding. I am an American citizen, but as an American citizen, I want to tell you something and I want to tell you this right now. We are not your enemies. You are not my enemy, but you are my brothers and you are my sisters. It doesn't make any difference what you believe. It doesn't make any difference what color, race, creed, what kind of uh, religious beliefs that you follow. None of that matters. All that matters is whether or not we get along as brothers and sisters and we stop hurting each other. There's a great deal of us Americans here in the United States, just like you in your countries, that do not wish for this to continue. They, we do not wish for the hate and the violence and the destruction of our world just in, in, for, for uh, major corporations to make more and more money. We feel it is just as ridiculous as you do. I don't want to hurt you. And I'm pretty sure most of you don't want to hurt us. I don't believe the media and what they're trying to tell me. That you are my enemy. And that you are against us. And that you hate America. There's a great deal of us here in America that do not hate anybody. We are not a part of this regime. We're not a part of what's going on. We want peace and love and to just live with a home. And to be, have food on the table. And for our children to be healthy. We want it just as much as you do. There is no difference between you and I. Just because your belief system is different does not make us any less brothers. Just because you live in a different area doesn't make us different brothers any more than your color or your creed makes you different from me. We are all fellow earthlings. I am an earthling and you are my brother earthling. The U.S. is not the only country that is struggling with the current events in the world. We're not the only country. It, is, it involves all of us, all over the world. There's food shortages, shortage, um, I mean, shelter shortages all over the world. There is many things that is in common between 
of the both of us that is exactly the same. We're going through the same struggles. It's no different. There is no difference between you and I. We are the same. Not only are we the same, but you know we are capable of fixing this. We are not a naive race anymore. We need to grow up. We need to be adults. We need to accept this responsibility and take it as a beautiful challenge and to move forward on it and to look at it as a chance to change this world. And we have a chance. In those recent riots, no, they, they're calling them riots. They're not riots. They're protests. I don't believe what the media tells me. I don't believe anything the media tells me. Even polls. When they say, well, over, over half of Americans actually believe that uh, surveillance in other countries such as Germany is okay. I don't believe those polls. I've lived in America all my life. I've never been polled. So I don't even believe those polls are even valid. They're moot. I think if you talk to us individually, which we have the capabilities, we have the technology these days, to speak to one another, to get in touch with one another across the internet, and to tell each other how we feel and how all of us feel. It's not, it's the governments, the government of this and the government of that, that is controlling the situation and causing the situation. Most of the time when we go to war with each other, we have no idea why. We just go because it's the patriotic act for whatever country that we happen to be in. But we are no longer children. We're no longer an adolescent race. We're able to think and we're able to reason it's amazing how we're such a race of people who believe that we're so intelligent on this planet that we have such capabilities of reasons and intelligence to create just about anything, but we can't fix this? Really? We can fix this. We can make it better. We have the technologies already. It's just they're being hoarded by people who believe that they know better than we do. That is not true. We are an adult race. It is time for us to take that responsibility and take the challenge and move forward. Yes, we have some green energies that are coming out, such as wind and solar. And other things are trying to repl uh, replace with uh, the dominant oil industry that happens to be running and actually corrupting and ruining this world. That's not even half of it. The other half of it is, is we have technologies that have also been buried by these same corporations. That if we were to bring them out of the market that everybody would have energy and it would be free and abundant. And imagine having free energy and abundant energy and food for everybody. And imagine everybody hand in hand with each other, country after country, creed after creed, looking at each other as brothers and sisters with love and reverence and kindness, which we all really want to do. That's what we all do. The only reason that they say we go to war to begin with is because that's what we want is peace. But obviously, the old way of doing, the adolescent way of doing it, is going to war and striking against your brother doesn't work. It's obvious. We've been doing it for centuries. It still doesn't work. The only way to take care of this is we have to grow up, come together, and have an understanding, and drop the differences. We don't have to get rid of the differences. I like the differences. I like the idea that people are exotic, that we're so different from each other. It makes things interesting to, and diverse. It, it, no longer a Borg collective. I don't want to be a part of Borg collective. I like the idea that you are different from me and that you have different ideas. If you didn't have different ideas, we wouldn't grow as a race. We'd be stagnant. The whole reason why we have different ideas and that we disagree with each other at times is because that is the way of growth. If you didn't challenge each other, we wouldn't grow as a race. And for some of you out there, the small, minute portion of you who's, who the government says represents the whole of you, I don't believe that. But the small minority of you who believes killing in the name of your God is okay, is very unhealthy towards your own religious beliefs. If you believe killing... It's what's going to solve peace with your brother. Then you are misguided. And you need to really re-examine how you practice your belief system. Your belief system isn't wrong. Your interpretation is probably incorrect. And you need to re-examine that. They're really trying to tear us apart as a world. They want us to collapse. Now when I say they... 
everybody is starting to figure out what the they is. The they is is the corporations who run the world. Same corporations that happen to run the banking systems. We all know this, and I'm not going to pound this to death because if you want to research it, you can research it for yourself. I am just here to plea with you to come together on an understanding of this. We need to band together just like they are in Egypt, just like they are in Venezuela. We need to do it more so here in America. It is amazing how freedom is trying to be released through many citizens across the world. Many citizens are coming out of their homes and marching for what they believe in. And the, and the media is calling it violent. But it's not violent. It only becomes violent when the police involve themselves and make it violent. It is peaceful protests. And we're just going to defend ourselves. If we get attacked, we have to defend ourselves. But we'd rather do this peacefully. It is amazing, like I said, that here in America, that we are supposed to be the leaders of democracy and freedom. But yet, we're lagging way behind on this agenda. Way behind the rest of the world who really desires freedom and out of the hands of this tyranny that is going on. They have been preaching fear and pushing fear onto us. Our governments are pushing fear at every levels. But the only thing that they have managed to do is create fear of them, of the governments. We need to take it back. We need to take our freedom back. We need to take a hold of it and own it and bring it to our own. We are one world. We are one world, one group of people. There is no difference. And you can make a difference. You can make a difference in this world. It's not just me. It's not just, it's not just um, any kind of poli Actually, don't rely on your politicians because they're not there for you. They're just going to repeat what the system is doing. That's what they're trained to do. It is up to us. It is up to me. It is up to you. It is up to your neighbor. And you know what? I once thought, I sat and thought, what wouldn't be nice to march, a peaceful march for peace, to let our politicians all over the world know what's going on, to let them know that we are unhappy and we are dissatisfied and that we want a better world and we are capable of doing it. And we keep saying, well, it costs too much money. It costs too much resources. If we keep thinking that way, our world is going to go right down the tubes. And there will be no surviving it. We've got to come to grips with this. We've got to come to an understanding of this. We've got to understand what we need to do and just do it. Quit talking about it and do it. People all over the world are starting to have this understanding. They're starting to understand what they need to do. Well, I'm pleading to you right now. Let's make it back to love. Let's take us back to love. We need to be back in the hands of love on this and love one, one another. And it doesn't matter whether or not some of you believe differently from me. You could believe whatever you want. And just because I believe differently from you doesn't negate your belief system. It doesn't make me any less your brother. It doesn't make you any less my sister or my brother. It just means that we are just as lost. We're all lost. We need to, the only way we can find ourselves is to find each other. We need to start being, stop being naive. We need to stop being naive on this. Come together in understanding and march towards a good future, a future that is worthy. One of the things I would like to put out there too is yes, I am a believer in other beings from other planets. Some of you are not convinced on that. But like I said earlier, it is very naive to believe that we are the only intelligent species in an entire universe of billions of galaxies, which each galaxy with billions of stars, with over at least 10,000 stars that are capable of habiting life. And to believe and to be arrogant to believe that we are the only civilization that has made it this far in a universe that's over 14 billion years old. We're probably the young ones, probably the very adolescent young ones, and we just haven't figured that out. We are being visited probably by other beings and they're watching us and they're seeing if we are worthy to join a larger community of the galaxy or the universe. And yet here we sit bickering amongst, amongst each other instead of being a hand in hand on this and looking 
forward towards the future to a greater goal, to something that is larger than ourselves, something that is greater than ourselves. That is something that I really would like to see. One thing you need to keep in mind is as a race, a race that believes themselves to be so intelligent and to be the top of the chain, it is amazing to see how destructive and disastrous we are to our own world to a point of total annihilation of even the human race and even probably every species on this earth if we keep going the same way we are going. I'm not talking about climate change. That's not what I'm speaking of. I'm speaking of just the way we happen to react towards nature and towards our fellow earthlings, the animals and plants and other living beings. This is not a proper way to act. We all know this, but we continue doing it the same way because we don't want to change the status quo because it takes too much effort. Is that true? Is that truth? It, does it take too much effort? I don't believe so. I believe that we have the capabilities, we have the understanding. We just have to do. We need to just do it. Move forward on this. Because if we do not stop abusing our brothers and sisters, not stop abu abusing our fellow earthlings, the animals and plants, because I'm going to tell you right now, the earth, the animals and nature and plants doesn't need us. We need them. If we were to disappear tomorrow, the earth would go on just as happily as can be. They don't need us. We need them, though, to survive. If we keep going the way we are, we destroy our own environment and we're considered the most intelligent race. We need to correct this. It's time for correction. It's time to move forward and hand in hand in brotherhood and understood that each other is allowed to be what you want to be and not to stand in each other's way. It is amazing that we're all born into a world and yet we pay for a world we're born into. We pay for the basic needs, food, shelter, love, air even. It's coming to be air. It's becoming to be water. These are the basic necessities of life and yet we're allowing these people to control those so they can control us and our destinies. We need to take this back. I propose to people that we need to make a change. The change is, is just like what I'm seeing across the world. It's not about what flag you stand behind. Flags mean nothing without the understanding of freedom. Just like religions don't mean un anything unless you practice the teachings. If you just worship the messenger, you have missed the message. Peace comes at a price. Peace is hard work. But it's worth it. In the long run, peace is definitely worth it. And it's something that we all deeply, deeply want. We deeply just want this. And it's something that we could do. There are people out there already leading this fight, like Dr. Stephen Greer with good ideas on his Disclosure Project. And with other people like Foster, Foster Gamble with the Thrive Project, which I will list uh, some of those links for you to go look at if you'd like, who lead this in a world of peace, in a world of reverence, that we can go into together, hand in hand, as brothers and sisters. I love you all. I think you're all very interesting and all adorable. All adorable. Everybody in the world is freaking adorable. We don't really want to fight with each other. We don't want to see this. We don't want to see this destruction of this beautiful planet. We don't want to see the destruction of this race. And if we keep going the way we are going and allow the elites, the small group of people, of less than 5% of them to rule the rest of the 90% of us, that's exactly what's going to happen unless we take it back. What's nice to hear is there are people all over the world that have actually heard my mind message about it's time for us to wake up and move forward and to take this planet back. And people are marching everywhere. But keep in mind what the goal is. It's not about your country. It's about the survival of our race now. It's the survival of this planet. It's time to stand up in masses, I believe. It's time to gather together in mass and to march forward. To go forward in this world. 
and to show the elites, the small groups, this is not what we want. But to not do it the same way that they would do in a war machine tactics. We need to, as one group, as one people, move forward, march on our capitals, and let them know that we have had enough in a peaceful manner. Again, I would like to thank you for listening to me today. I would like to thank you for coming together and to see some of these people and, and what they're doing in this world right now. Now the rest of us need to follow in line. The rest of us need to follow. Join in on these groups. Join in on hand in hand on saving us. We could have the world of tomorrow today if we want it. We just have to do it. And it can't be done hidden behind walls of countries or walls of religion, race or creed. It has to be done as one people. So when it comes time for us to go into the greater part of the universe, for when it comes time for us to become part of a galactic community, that we are ready and that we can show them we are ready. We are ready now. I believe we are ready now. If it wasn't for the ruling elite, elite stopping us, from moving forward, I believe that we are ready right now. We just have to make it happen. Please, I beg you, we don't hate each other. Just because the TV says that we do doesn't mean anything. We have the capabilities of talking to each other right now, just like I am right now with you. We have this ability. Now it is up to us. The ball's in our court. What are we going to do? If we sit back, we will falter. If we make the right choices, move forward on this, I believe in less than a decade we could fix this. And it would be a beautiful world. The world we were looking at. The thousand years of peace that even Christianity talks about. Or that Muslim talks, uh, the Muslim religion talks about. But it doesn't matter what religion you are. I don't care if you're Hindu, Juda Judaism, or, 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 or uh, Taoists, or Zen, or uh, Buddhism. I, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever makes you feel that your life is complete is all that matters. Whatever I feel that makes my life complete is all that matters. As long as I stay out of your way and you stay out of my way. But work in cooperation, that's fine. But to have an understanding that we're going to be different, that's the difference right there, is that we have to come to the understanding that it is okay for us to be different. It is okay for me to think differently from you because it makes you grow. It is okay for you to think differently from me because then it makes me grow. Because if I had the same ideas that you did, we'd be stagnant. So it is time for us to come together to understand what's going on in this world. To quit believing the shite that's presented to us on the television. And to understand this is not how we really think and feel. It is how the small elite wants us to think and feel so they can maintain their control. Because they know they're losing control of this world. They know that we want it different. So it is time for us to make a difference. And you can make that difference. We can do this. We are adult race now. We need to take the responsibility and make this happen. And make this world a beautiful world in which we want to live in. It is possible. It's not impossible. Quit thinking it's impossible. Because you're creating that reality. The more you create that reality, the more it is true. So let's create a new one together, hand in hand, brother with brother, brother with sister and sister with sister, all over the world, one race, to cry out in the night and to say that we are ready for morning. We are ready for the sun to rise. We are ready for that golden age. We can achieve that golden age. I hope that you'll see it in your hearts to hear this message and to move forward with me. 
May love be with you and go in peace.